Welcome to a very special Tuesday Travel and Young. Now, in the past, we've had the chance to learn about the geological history of Denmark when we visited Mons Klint. We've also been to Yelling and learned about the birth certificate of Denmark. But there's one piece of Danish identity that we haven't learned enough about yet. And so this week, I'm going to go on a bit of a journey. I'm going to pack up my gear, throw it in my bag, and jump on a train, a subway, to get to the airport so I can take off on a plane. And that brings me right here to Tallinn, Estonia, where in 1219, the Danenbro, the Danish flag, fell from the sky. And that's what we're going to talk about on this Tuesday's Traveling Young. <music> We're the Youngs. We've spent our lives traveling the world. And in 2018, we moved from Chicago, Illinois, to Copenhagen, Denmark. Now we want to share with you how our new lives abroad is keeping us young. Keeping us young. Are helping to keep us young. Welcome to a very special Tuesday Travel and Young, where we learn about the Danenbro, the Danish national flag, which fell from the sky right here in 2019, as I said in the intro, here being Tallinn, Estonia, which is where the story begins for the flag. But for me, my story actually begins in Denmark. So let's start there. We have to come back here. This is where we first started learning about everything, especially the Danish flag. One of the first things they tell you when you meet people in Denmark and they heard you've just arrived is they tell you, we've got the oldest flag in history and it fell from the sky in 1219 to save our army. And so this is where I learned about what the flag was. But if I compare that to the American flag, it's pretty interesting because the American flag, it's something most Americans love as well. You see big versions of it at baseball games for when they sing the national anthem beforehand. Politicians wear it as a lapel pin. It's on wonderful buildings like at Cape Canaveral in Florida. We have paper plates and pies for picnics. And if you go on Amazon, you can even find this wonderful pair of pants. The Danish flag, though, is also all over the place. Danes celebrate the flag on birthdays. It's on Christmas trees during the holidays, on buses during special flag days. I've seen more Danish flags flying out and about than I've ever seen American flags at one time. Most houses have a legit flagpole installed in their backyard. The standard flag, though, can only be flown during the daylight hours. But there's a special Vimple flag that can be flown all the time. We actually had one of those in our old rental house. Danes love their flag. You can see why. It's the oldest flag in the world. But in order to learn the next part of the story, which is where it came from, there's a special painting that I want to go see. The story of the Danabro is not complete without also seeing what is known as the best visual representation of the day that it fell from the sky. And that's the famous painting from Christian August Lorenzen called Danenbro Falling from the Sky during the Battle of Lundinisa, June 15th, 1219. And well, you can see it printed in textbooks and, and a plaque in Estonia. And Maya and I saw it in Aarhus at the Aros Museum last October. But it's actually part of the collection of the Stantens Museum for Kunst here in Copenhagen, Denmark. But after some internet sleuthing, I realized it's not here right now. It's actually on exhibition out of Denmark. So as part of our journey to track down the story of the Danabro, I'm going to have to go somewhere else. And that somewhere else is right here in noisy Vilnius, Lithuania. The painting is on loan in this museum right behind me as part of an exhibition called Awakening of Nations, a Danish golden age in painting to help celebrate 100 years of diplomatic relations between Lithuania and Denmark. The painting uh, by C.L. Lorentzen is one of the iconic pictures of Denmark and Danishness. For most Danes who see this is the real representation of an event that we actually don't know happened, how it happened, but it, showed, it shows this fantastic moment where we probably got our flag. And they had a battle called Lindenese, and today it's called Tallinn, which means the Danish city. And apparently we were losing badly. And then, according to the myth, there was prayers to, to, uh, to God. And when the flag came down, the Danes who were losing out to the Estonians won the battle. It's, it shows Danes being, being ready on the field together with their king. And, and I think I, I really like that representation of, of us as a people we are. So there you have it. We've 
learned about the flag. We've seen the different types of flags. We've seen the famous painting depicting the battle here in Tallinn, Estonia. And this spot that legend says this is where the flag fell, but it's really hard to pinpoint the exact location. But this is where they've set up a memorial, as you can see. And Queen Margaret was here just two years ago to celebrate the 800th anniversary of the Danish flag because it's the oldest flag still used today. There you go. That's the story of the Danenbro. Thank you for joining us on this Tuesday Traveling Young as I took you from Denmark to Lithuania to now here in Estonia to track down the story of the Danish national flag. It's pretty cool to come here and see where it originated here in Tallinn, Estonia. It's definitely worth the visit, but I thank you for joining me. Please stick around because on Friday, I'm going to have a video from the rest of the trip to Estonia where I went all the way east to the Russian border and actually saw a Danish castle, what originated as a Danish castle from the same time that the Danes controlled the northern part of Estonia for 150 years after the battle that took place here where we saw the Danish flag. So definitely check it out on Friday. But since it's Tuesday, I'm going to have a super quick trot on Tuesday. And then we're going to end the video after that. So I'm going to say bye right now from Tallinn, Estonia. I'm going to try this fermented milk drink called Kama, which is a traditional Estonian drink. Let's see how this goes. Oh my goodness. So it tastes like basically sour milk. It's not sweet at all. It's hard to describe it. It's very sour tasting, but it's filling because it's got some other stuff in it. But I've been told I had to try this, so there you go. All right, that was an interesting trot on Tuesday where I'd say, I don't know, I felt like my energy level was low. It had been a long day in Estonia and it was an odd drink, but I'm glad I tried it. I actually ended up drinking the entire glass. That said, I need to thank a couple people who are amazing in order to make this possible. First of all, in Lithuania, Simon from the Danish Cultural Institute of Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania. Um, they were there as part of the uh, kind of inauguration of the exhibit, and he was kind enough to take time to talk with me. There's actually more of that interview talking about Lithuania and Denmark that will be a part of a Lithuanian video that will come in a couple weeks, but I had some really good conversation with him around the painting, so I included that here. Thank you for your help and helping to coordinate uh, my time there and helping to coordinate with the museum so I could get special access to the painting and with you in front of the painting prior to the museum actually opening on the day of the opening of the exhibition. So very much appreciated for that. Um, also, uh, Stin from Estonia and the travel group that helped me arrange my trip out east, and he was full of facts about Estonia and Denmark that he gave me throughout our trip out east, which you'll see this Friday. Thank you. And he's the one who told me that Tallinn, the capital of Estonia, means Danish city. I hadn't heard that before then, and Simon mentioned that as well when I was in Lithuania. So thank you for all your help through the trip to Estonia. And there you go. I mean, it was just such a great experience. I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, yeah, we've got a lot of cool things coming up. Like I'm gonna have video from this trip in the US in a couple weeks. And I've got Lithuania. We got a lot of other things popping. And then Friday, the trip to, well, longer trip to Estonia. So stay tuned for all the things we've got coming. And thank you again for all your continued support. We're hoping we can keep growing and doing this kind of content in the future. But for now, I need to finish editing so I can get this done <laughs> and go do some stuff here in the US. So I'm gonna say goodbye.